of our theology teachers that are here today. We have Mr. Chavez right over here. Do that for me, so. We have Mr. Carici in the back. And we have the wonderful Mr. Padilla right up here. Um, one of the main things that we do, what we do, and why we love what we do, is because we really get to walk the journey with you guys in that whole relationship with God and the understanding of that love that God has for us. But we got to also make sure that we have our priorities set and our priorities straight. We need to make sure that we put God on the top of our lives. That's easier said than done. There's a guy I just want to talk to you about who's having some struggles doing just that. And I have this tube here with these three balls, and these are going to represent different things in this guy's life. Now, we're in all boys school, so we like to kind of have a little bit of fun and mix it up a little bit. And so I can see right now that after you had a nice little nutrition break, you look like the land of the living dead. So I'm going to ask you to kind of shout this out. Each of these are going to stand for something. So the old one's going to stand for God. Can you all say God? God! Come on, a little bit louder there. Let me check. God! God! Green one, money! Money! Green one, something you love out like pizza! Pizza! Okay. Here's another one. How many sacraments do Orthodox Christians and Roman Catholics celebrate? Roman Catholics and Orthodox Christians. How many sacraments? Seven. Seven sacraments. Okay. In charge of 80 men, but his name is based off of the Latin word for 100. Jesus actually spoke to one of these officers, and we get the words from Mass, Lord, I am not worthy to receive you from this person, this office. Five, four, three, two, one. This military officer was for the moves. in charge of 80 men, although the name means comes from the word for 100. Five. Four. That's a. I'm not time for. I'm looking for the office. Oh, like you know, lieutenant, oh. sergeant. Is a centurion? A centurion. A centurion. 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 Very good. Do I have to dry the shoe? Wait, do we look at the shoe? You don't have to hold the shoe. You can just look down into the shoe. So you can go. Yeah, it's on you. Oh, it's good. This guy can draw. Oh, right, how to do that. It's like a bank. It's a picture. It's a purse. The purse is correct. Shark. Shark pop. 
with a yolk. So, yes. so you can see it's a simple shark. You can see the yolk sack right here. So, it's under. so you have the food color with the meat. And this is like where the fat is going. So once they're both together and you put a detergent in, they mix. So the surface tension of the, the, the food color and the fat and milk, they basically break apart. And it's like this reaction just goes on. You just keep going, going, going. And it's red bone marrow. That red bone marrow then goes on to make red blood cells. And red blood cells are important to you because they only take oxygen in and out. Without those red blood cells, you don't do well. So when somebody says they need like a bone marrow transplant, that's what they're going to want to get, is that red bone marrow. I want to talk to you about, about two other things. And, and those two things, number one, is, is why Crespi is a good place. Uh, I've, I'm, four, I'm almost 40 years old. I've been working, coaching for 17 years, 18 years. This is by far the best job I've had. And it's not because this room you're sitting in, it's not because of the gym that you'll see out there, it's not because of the Jumbotron, it's not because we win. What makes Crespi great, guys, and I want you to hear this, is the people that are a part of this school. The guys that are giving you a tour right now, the other coaches that you're gonna meet, the other teachers that you're gonna meet, the administration, and the parents. Everybody at Crespi wants you to be successful. My most requested tricks, it's not really a trick in itself, but it's something that, that captures their attention. It's basically, it looks like a Bible, and as you're talking, flames shoot out of it. And so you can use it for a lot of different illustrations, obviously the fire and brimstone things, uh, but I like to talk about God's love. There's a line uh, in scripture that talks about God's love being like a consuming fire. And so I use that as an illustration um, to constantly remember that everything that fire touches, it destroys and it's consumed. But everyone is also consumed by the love of God. We have to respond to it, but we have that option, that ability, and that, that uh, gift of his grace. Well, Mr. Vidia always tells me the story that when he heard that they hired someone for the theology department who was a magician, uh, that he feared what was happening to our school's theology department. But uh, I think once he got to know me and got to know that I, I do know what I'm talking about um, and that I do have uh, the church's uh, interest and church's teachings at heart, I think he began to see the magic as a way of bringing kids um, to become interested in the faith and interested in learning about the faith. Mr. Olson, how was Step Up Day? Oh, it was great. Yeah, what did you what did you teach the children? Uh, it was a huge success. Uh, we had a vacuum bazooka to start things out, and then we uh, had the students go around the room. Uh, we had some microscopes set up where they could look at organisms under the microscope. We had some chemistry demonstrations, uh, flame tests, the spectra, uh, and then we also had uh, a bone, a cow femur that Mr. Strickler brought in, and so he was showing the students what a dissected cow femur looks like, comparing it to the human anatomy. And uh, we also had some snakes. Uh, the highlight there is that uh, Ryan Walsh lost one of the snakes in the cabinets, but we did get it out. And then we also had some uh, biology specimens from Mr. Batista. So it was a huge success. All right, Big Daddy O out. Don't I think they responded very well. Uh, we were ranked in the evaluations as the, the second favorite um, among all of the classes that they visited. I know a lot of the kids commented afterwards and we had a couple guys from the tour in the open house who remembered it. So that's always a good sign. You know, I think some of them you know, might not have quite gotten what we were doing or uh, might have been a little tired, but I think that's really just a sign that they were really enthralled in the wonder and awe of the tricks, just as Moses was consumed by the wonder and awe of God at the burning bush so he couldn't really express you know, much joy or smiles or he was just entranced.